Welcome to today's edition of Frightfully Forgotten Horror Movies. But before we get started, what are we sipping on today? We are sipping on Hanniger Draft Lager. Today we're going to be talking about 1978's The Manitou. It is directed by William Girdler. He hasn't done much, but he has done the kind of schlocky horror movie Grizzly. <laughs> Tony Curtis is in this, and he's a Hollywood legend. Houdini that he was in. The real story of Houdini. Yeah. Y'all got punched in the kidneys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he didn't die in that torture chamber. He just got punched in the fucking kidneys. <laughs> Michael Ansara is in this. He was in a lot of TV, mostly TV. Played Kang in the original series of Star Trek and Deep Space Nine. And Voyager on top yeah, of it, yeah. too. So it, like, connects them all. Susan Strasberg's in this. She plays the main female lead. And, of course, Burgess Meredith is in this. We don't have to go into what he's done. The Manitou starts off with this lady, Karen, going to the hospital because she has this strange tumor kind of growing on her shoulder. In the hallway, <laughs> like, not even yeah. in, like, a room. It's, like, in the hallway, like poking at it. This guy is kind of like a specialist on tumors and I've never really seen anything like this before and it, right. he's looking at the x-rays and like you know what it kind of looks like a fetus or something. We then get introduced to our main character Harry Earnskin and he is a tarot card reader like a mysticist <laughs> and he, he's got the robes on and everything and this mustache. Yeah and it's sick fake mustache. <laughs> If you're good to the gods, yeah. the gods will be good to you. And then he kind of sees her out of his apartment, and as soon as she's gone, he takes off the mustache <laughs> and like puts it on the wall and puts on all this disco. Yeah, he <laughs> pours himself a beer. Gets a phone call, and it's Karen. Kind of find out they used to be a, a thing back in the day, and she's kind of confiding in him. And they get together, they meet. She tells him about this weird thing on her shoulder, and... She's scared because she's going in for the surgery to go get it removed, spend the night together. And I don't know, I thought I'd be sleeping with this woman with this <laughs> weird <laughs> thing growing on her. In her sleep, she starts saying all these weird things, these weird words. She goes in for the surgery and goes to go make the incision and suddenly he's all, Ew! He cuts his own hand. And they go flying back. Then he goes back flying and back and all these too. tools. <laughs> In the meantime, Harry's doing a card reading with this old woman. And suddenly she starts going into this weird trance. Then she starts like levitating and like <laughs> going down the hallway of the apartment. And she just kind of gets to the end of these stairs and <laughs> goes down the stairs and takes the railing right out with her ribs. Harry figures that there's something more to this tumor than just medical. So he goes to a couple of friends of his, true, legit <laughs> card readers and mystics. Not frauds like, like him. <laughs> yeah. Gather around a big table to do this seance to try and get more information about what's going on with Karen. This head comes up through the black glass and starts mouthing all these words and then goes back down. Mac, or Mike Love as we're going to call him, starts doing a little bit of research. They find the author of this book and this guy is actually some kind of weird eccentric archaeologist. <laughs> these words that Karen was saying in her sleep, this Panna Witchy Salatu, is actually from an old extinct language, from an extinct native tribe. This sort of lump growing on her back, a 400 year old native medicine man that's <laughs> starting to get reincarnated. He finally stumbles upon the door of a medicine man named John Singing Rock. Painted brown and everything. <laughs> like back in the day, he didn't actually hire a. A Native right. American to play Native American is get some guy and paint him. Yeah. So John Singing Rock agrees to help Harry for a hundred thousand dollars in nineteen seventy-eight. <laughs> Which is huge. John Singing Rock and Harry go back to the hospital to try and help Karen, and by this point, that thing on her back is like huge. Yeah. And it's all like pulsating and everything yeah. too. Putting a ring of sand around the bed. Because there's a wall there. Yeah. It doesn't actually make a yeah. circle. It just does this <laughs> half circle. Like, it doesn't have to be complete. You'd think. Yeah. That's not a circle, my friend. <laughs> That's a semi-circle. Maybe a maybe a hundred thousand dollars doesn't get you yeah. much, I guess. <laughs> Obviously not, because he doesn't try very hard. Pulls out these bones and then he's just sleeping. <laughs> In the even, waiting room. He didn't even do anything. <laughs> 
<laughs> he just put some circle and did this, and then he goes to bed. Like, what? <laughs> That's a lot, of a lot of money here just to fucking sleep in the next room. This guy's head just bust right through the glass of the door. This medicine man kind of has stolen this guy's skin to become whole. And he starts to get born. He actually starts to rip out of Karen's back. And that's where we're gonna end it. It gets crazier than you expect it to. The concepts of this movie is cool. There's an old world, right? Against all this new world technology. That laser surgery, and then it's all it's all going around the room and everything. <laughs> yeah. Machines have a manitou, so they use all the manitous of all the machines in the hospital to try to battle this medicine man, right. you know? So it's kind of neat. Yeah. Tony Curtis's character, Harry, he's a mystic, mm -hmm. but he's a fraud. But then he's thrust into this situation where it is dealing with black magic. It is real, and now I actually have to fight it for real. Right, and it's somebody that he loves and yeah. cares about, right? They do a great job of being serious where they need to be, and also, they know what they're doing with the comedy. Especially with Tony Curtis with that fake mustache. And oh, the, yeah. The mystic things. It's like in the disco music. Yeah, like... They're all trying to make him way younger than what he really <laughs> is. Like, all the clothes that he wears are all contemporary. But he's all, like, 60. Yeah. <laughs> Wearing those super tight white pants. You can see his balls and his dink all, like, super oh, outlined. Yeah. Like those tight leather jackets, yeah. and oh man. And like you look at his face, and you can see all the lines, and you can see he's getting all pale because he's getting old. But then that dye job, <laughs> that super dye job hair, it's pretty tame, right? It mm -hmm. stays tame. And then when the medicine man kind of gets born, and then the shit hits a fan, and suddenly it gets gory. Like yeah. that room is all splattered in blood after that guy gets skinned. The floor's all iced up. Yeah, which is cool. Yeah, yeah, which is neat. And like the nurse is all frozen solid. They like fly back into the nurse, and then the nurse's head comes right <laughs> yeah, off yeah, yeah. and goes into that glass pane. Yeah. <laughs> that guy's head all explodes. Yeah, that, yeah, that doctor <laughs> guy all blows up. <laughs> it gets really gory, like out of nowhere. Yeah, it really ramps up. Yeah. The sure. medicine man is like, really, he looks fucking creepy. Yeah. And I like how he doesn't, he's only short. He's too, a little right? short, like, yeah. Yeah, but the thing is, you don't need to be tall to be powerful. Yeah. And he's like super powerful. Yeah. Even just the simple aspect of having something weird growing on you is kind of scary. Yeah, it's kind of right? unsettling. And then to learn that it's like this fetus and the, oh, that's even scarier. And then to learn, oh, it's a, a medicine man trying to be reborn through you. Oh, that's even scarier. Yeah, and he's like, he can't be stopped. Yeah. And then he can take over like the world yeah, and shit. Yeah, that's even like, scarier. Man, like, man. it just it keeps ramping up, <laughs> yeah, right? It keeps getting worse, yeah. But this movie also reminds me a lot of like an NES game, like an old school adventure, Nintendo game. Adventure <laughs> yeah. game. Where you could be, you could play like Tony Curtis, <laughs> and you're like fighting all these like medicine men or whatever. And there's different levels, like you gotta get to like the desert to, to get John Singh Rock as like a partner. <laughs> blip, 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 blip. Yeah. <laughs> that little dialogue screen comes up, yeah. like, yeah. I the, will help you. In the cave or yeah. whatever. And you could buy things. You have to get enough coins to get to, <laughs> to, to get the hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, to, yeah, by fighting to, like... To, to pay John Singing Rock. By fighting like these generic medicine <laughs> men or whatever. Then you gotta go to the hospital as like the final yeah. level and beat all the levels. Overall, this movie is just like, it's a good story. It's a lot of fun, mm -hmm. like from start to finish, like it's tons of fun. Exactly. And the characters help with that. They're all clearly defined, yeah. and they're all fun characters, really. Everyone plays their part perfectly, mm -hmm. and everything, like, the chess pieces are placed perfectly, and it all just <laughs> kind of works really well together, you Exactly. Know? So if you want just a good, fun, 70s... Tongue-in-cheek kind of horror movie, yeah. right? It doesn't yeah. take itself too seriously, but it knows when to take itself seriously. Exactly. Check out 1978's The Manitou. And make sure you dress really tight <laughs> when you do it. A lot, of, a lot of leather and stuff that doesn't fit you at all. And keep drinking.